Testing. Yay. And <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. For the first time in weeks, the temperature is moderate and we have about 40% humidity. You can tell because my hair is under something that vaguely resembles control. So I'm actually having a reasonable hair day. I'm not going to call it a good hair day. I'll call it a reasonable hair day. Um, this past few weeks, it's just been with the humidity. Oh, it's like walking around with a head full of steel wool. Awful. Hate humidity. I don't function well in heat and throw in the humidity and it just makes me cranky. I'm not a happy person when it's hot and humid and sticky and you. We get that way when we get older. You. <laughs> So I'm just grateful that we are at 21 degrees today. It is a lovely sunny day. Very little humidity. It's beautiful. I'm loving it. Every window and door in my house is open. Finally get some fresh air. I'm so sick of the air conditioning. It's not funny. And I know that there's a lot of people in the same boat. So we're going to have some fun today. We're going to be working with some Decorart fluid acrylics, the media fluid acrylics. I haven't done this in a while, and I've really been looking forward to it. Uh, part of the issue has been availability. It's been very difficult to get for the last couple of years. But I can tell you, you can get them now on Decorart.com. And uh, if you look in the description under the video on the YouTube channel, there is a link to Decorart. You click on that link and I have a coupon code for you. It's also in the description. You can use that to take 20% off of your order if you're shopping on Decorart.com. So that I wanted to get out of the way. So if you're looking to um, refill your supply of Decorart Media Fluid Acrylics, you'll find them there. And if you've never played with them before, you're missing out. They're absolutely fantastic. I am in love with them. And I have a full compliment, so I have lots to play with. I do have a shout out this week. My shout out is to stampersanonymous.com. I am absolutely obsessed with Stampers Anonymous because... Tim Holtz just had a major release for the fall and it's all available on uh, stampersanonymous.com. I love that website. The service is fantastic. They have a great selection and uh, they have all things Tim Holtz and I do adore Tim Holtz. So if you are looking for some fun new toys to add to your sandbox and to play in your studio, hop on over to Stampenda or Stampendus. Oh my goodness. Stampersanonymous.com. You can also go to Stamp. They, it could too. Yeah. Well, Stampendus <laughs> is now with Spellbinders. Ah. So um, that's another great site. If you want to hop on over there, go over to spellbinders.com. You're <laughs> going to find lots of cool stuff. So today we're going to be playing with uh, Deckwork Media Fluid Acrylic, which means a little bit of mixed media. We're going to have a little bit of fun with this. And texture mediums. We haven't played with texture mediums in quite some time, and I've been missing them. So we're going to be dipping into some texture paste and a bunch of really fun colors. I, I have a palette within the fluid acrylics that I have a tendency to stick to. I really love how vibrant they are and how intense they are and how transparent they are and you can really have a lot of fun. So we're going to be working with, believe it or not, four colors. That's it. We're going to have uh, quinacridone magenta, green gold, sap green, and dioxazine purple. And then of course a couple of Americana colors, the uh, Ashfaltum, of course, and uh, <laughs> a little bit of warm white, and uh, Almondine, which is one of the new colors that Decor put out in 2022. So not a huge color palette. I'm going to show you how to work with these. They're really fun. And I'm going to show you a fun technique to make these grapes look as lush as they do with actually very few steps. So that is what we're going to tackle today. And because we're tackling fluid acrylic and uh, a kind of a mixed media project, well, you know what? We're going to be using uh, the brush of choice today is going to be, some, of course, some Dynasty Water Lily because I'm really loving the Water Lily, but also the IPC brushes. So, uh, which means ink, pastel, and chalk. They're a fantastic line from Dynasty for working with mixed media. So you're going to love those two. And I'm going to show you a couple of brushes out of the IPC line that you might consider. So if you are looking for brushes, uh, my favorite supplier is thebrushguys.com. First of all, they already discount 
their pricing. And then uh, they were kind enough to give me a coupon code for you as well, which Tracy M will give you an additional discount off of the prices on the brushguys.com. So if you're looking for brushes, whether it's Water Lily, IPC, Faux Squirrel, or my uh, any of my other favorites, including the Fugly brushes, that's where you're going to find them. Uh, we do have giveaways today. And guess what they are? IPC brushes? <laughs> I was getting there, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sooner or later. I thought you were asking me. <laughs> yeah. No, I was getting there sooner or later. Uh, yeah. So we're going to be giving away a couple of nice little sets of Dynasty IPC brushes. And, uh, of course, we get some other goodies. There's some stamps from Stampendous tucked into that. And uh, we have a fun new stencil. we got a bunch of new stencils in this week. We haven't got them up on the website yet. I've just been a little busy. But uh, we did get some new Stencil Studio stencils in this week. They're so fun. You're going to love them. And, uh, of course, we have a little Stencil Studio giveaway in there as well. And, uh, of course, there's always something from Tombow. So we've got some good stuff from Tombow in there. So uh, we've got three of those little prize packs to give away today, which is a nice little bundle for somebody to get in the mail. And what else? What else? What else? What else? It's going to be a busy day. Uh, a relaxed day. When are they launching the 2023 colors? Um, I... I don't have a date for you yet, but I should know soon. Soon. Trademarked. Soon. Soon. <laughs> yes. Okay, trademark the soon. <laughs> but uh, believe me, uh, Deckward is as anxious to get that out there as we are. So that's what we're going to be thinking about. And uh, of course, you know, if you ever have suggestions, if you see colors that are really inspiring you, uh, you know what? post them on my Facebook page, pop them up on my Facebook page and just leave me a note saying this would make a great Americana color because mm -hmm. we'd love to see that. I'd love to see your ideas about which colors you would like to see coming up. <laughs> we need to know those things. We need to know those things. So I, I'm a, a double fisted drinker today. I've got a cup of coffee and a cup of tea. Have they put out a discontinued list yet? Uh, no. No. They have not. They did. They, well, I shouldn't say that. They did put out a list of colors that are going to be considered for discontinuation. Let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, and it was a long list. Um, of course, those need to be considered. And Deckward is putting together, uh, you know, a committee in order to address that. So they have not given a final list of discontinued colors. So just keep your eyes peeled. Deckwart will let us know when they're ready. <laughs> JL is wondering what happened to the Xmas with Puppers Fund. What happened to the Xmas? It, what happened to it? You guys did. You guys happened to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually, we compiled everything that comes up on the... Um, on the website. On the website, we compiled everything that comes up through Facebook stars and then compiled everything that comes up through uh, Super Chat. And this is the number we have. We're at $3,775.99, which means that we are 75.52% of our goal. With 126 days left. With 126 <laughs> days left. So uh, it's pretty exciting. I know we're really excited about it. Renee, not so much. Nope. Um, I wanted to say thank you to a couple of people. I'm not going to name them by name because, you know, it'll probably get Robin Storm and a couple of others in trouble. <laughs> you just named one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and Sue Potts. I love the, uh, the glitter pump. Thank you for sending me the link. I ordered one. Wait, what? I appreciate it. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a tool from Tim Holtz. It's a glitter pump. You fill it up with glitter and go it's a glitter gun. No, it's a pump. It's a glitter gun. No, it's not a gun. Do you, it's a pump. Do you pull a trigger and it shoots out glitter? No, you push down on the button and it shoots out glitter. <laughs> it's a pump. It's a glitter gun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I ordered one. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Glitter pump. <laughs> nope. <laughs> He's not happy. <laughs> Call it fairy mace. Fairy Mace. <laughs> That's a good name for it. Fairy Mace. Uh, we're going to work on this Vino Toscano, and I just realized that I didn't get my surface. 
I have the prepped surface, but I didn't go get my other surface. It's never mind. I'm okay. I'll be fine. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Are you drinking coffee right it now? It is coffee. Maybe it should be something else. No kidding. I don't think that they You're... put Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> mm. mm, coffee flavored Xanax. Yay, Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, folks, it's going to be one of those days. It is one of those days. <laughs> so I well, don't want to work tomorrow, but I have to. Yeah, he has to work tomorrow. But thankfully, we're in for a cool week. I if have an air-conditioned at... office. I'm happy. Oh, I, mean, I, <laughs> I just, the idea of going from air conditioning, I, I didn't even want to step outside because it was just like walking into a wet blanket. It was ew. <laughs> ew. That and there's so freaking many earwigs because it's so damp. <laughs> Tracy, you trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> I, no, <laughs> I'm not. So if you guys are ready to get started <laughs> on this uh, Vino Toscano, so am I. <laughs> are you sure? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, go for it. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. I'm going to grab my surface. <laughs> that very nearly went badly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a surface. So this is the one we're working on today. I, I have a, a, a love of all things Tuscany. I love this... You know, the the very vintage, the distressed, the the aged look. It just, this does wonders for me. I love this kind of thing. And so it's kind of a step back for me because I used to do a lot of this, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And I, I still love doing it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we're going to do today. It is not as difficult as it appears. It really isn't. And it's a very step-by-step -step process. And it uses a very minimal palette, which makes things less complex. And it, it gives you fewer opportunities to mess up. Let's put it that way. Believe me, if anybody could mess it up, I could. So that's what we're going to tackle today. I'm working on an eight by eight wooden panel. These are available at Michael's. Um, they're actually re pretty reasonably priced. And right now you can, I think they have all of their stretched canvas, their eight by eight canvases are all 40% off at Michael's this week. So if you're looking for a really good deal on your canvas or on canvas surfaces or these wood panels, they're all marked at 40% off right now. So even on uh, michaels.com, michaels.ca and at their stores, they're all very reasonably priced. So this is what we're gonna be working with. This is Decorts Media Texture Paste. I like this one. Um, it's almost like a drywall compound, but it has acrylic added to it, so it's quite hard when it's dry and fully cured. It's very durable. And we're only going to use about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. Now, I'm using a wide blade palette knife, and we're going to put this on in very thin patches the idea being that less is more and I do this randomly I don't put it on in in heavy applications I try to get it as random as possible so I lay it on and then just lightly scrape away the excess we're not putting a ton of this medium on. It is not thick. It's actually very thin. I'll get a little more on there. You're going to eventually cover about maybe 80% of the surface, maybe, maybe less. And then once you've got few patches here and there like I do you can see I'm not covering everything 
then I'm going to use the flat side of the blade with just a little of that medium on and I'm going to drag it across the surface and you can see that it leaves behind a little texture. It's not heavy, it's actually very thin and then you can take that knife and very lightly knock that texture down just a little. If you drag it that way it leaves little deposits and they're irregular. You can see they're not perfect. So we don't want a ton of this on here for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, you achieve nothing by using tons of it, except wasting a lot of material. It doesn't improve the finish in any way if you use a ton of it. So using small quantities of it, very, very thin application, will give you a much better finish in the end. It's going to be very durable. And if it does get damaged, it's much easier to fix it than if it were a heavy application. So that is the extent of your application for that. It's very light, very thin, not a ton of it, and you're only covering about 80% of the surface. So you're going to have spots where the wood shows through. And that is okay. Question to ponder. Yes. If you deliberately apply something to be random, is it really random? <laughs> that's a... That's a very good question. That is a paradox. Yeah, it is a paradox. I think when we use the term random, it just means no structured or no pattern per se. Yeah. So the nice part about this medium is you can not force dry it. So I'm just using the heat gun to dry this. And this one is sandable, but you, you're going to need a little elmo grease to, to sand it, which is okay too. That's why I prefer a thin application. Gives you more bang for your buck. And this is just fun. This part is just fun. The texture is subtle. It's not heavy. It still leaves you with a nice smooth finish to paint on. And then when we put a base color over top of this, we're using almondine, which is the lighter value. If you don't have almondine, you can use light uh, buttermilk. It will work just fine. Yahoo! I finally got a Saturday off. Yay! So I get to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've had a bunch of uh, new faces, well, new names yeah. on here. Well, new to me. I, you know, if we don't, we don't always see everybody's name on here. But uh, I recognize puppers. See, I know, I know when JL's on when I. The oh. second I see her icon, <laughs> it's a see the icon with the bumper dogs. Yeah. yeah. Donna Baker, did I prep the surface first? Uh, my prep for this, I sanded it. That's it. I I didn't seal it. And the reason I didn't is because one, I'm putting a texture medium down, and two, I'm going to put a base coat over top of this. So I just made sure that I had a little light sanding, remove any rough spots and any burrs, and uh, we're good to go. And I think it's dry. Oh, there's Linda. So I'm going to grab my little sanding. I've got one of these little sanding discs. And I'm going to give this a light sanding at the edge just to remove any you know, little rough bits. I'm going to pick it up so it doesn't bang on the tabletop. There we go. And this one is surprisingly not, oh, there's still a couple of wet spots. This one is surprisingly not, um, not rough. Don't, don't think I really need to sand this one, which is nice. I just like to sand the edges so that I don't have any rough bits sticking up. I've got one little spot there that, yeah. So, 
good to go. So a little bit of almondine or buttermilk will work just fine for this. I'm gonna put a little oops. <laughs> A little oops. A little oops. A little oops. I'm gonna grab my fugly brush because there's the schmegly in there. Oh, good. Already? Yeah. There we go. I got it. I got it. So, almondine or buttermilk. There's another oh, schmegly. Uh, I don't think that's completely dry. Why? I get a lot of water in my brush. Oh. No. It's fine. Aside from the fact that I have way too much paint on here. There we go. A lot of water in my brush. Ooh. Tracy, did you see Sandy McTeer's next door neighbor got struck by lightning? Yes, her shed burned. Oh, ding. <laughs> Don't fire. Sandy is in prep right now for OKC. Ooh. Here's a good question. What's that? It's from Patrick. Hey, Patrick. If you don't have texture paste, can you use gesso in heavier application? Absolutely. Boom. Any texture medium will work just fine, and gesso is one of my favorites. And it doesn't have to be a heavier application. <laughs> you can do the same thing I just did. Just brush, you know, palette knife, lightly put thin layers on. It does not have to be a heavy uh, application to get this. So. so I've got a base coat on here, but I'm not happy with it. So I'm gonna smooth it out. I started out with way too much paint. Oh, that's sweet. What's that? Uh, Norma Luther. Hi, Norma. Says, hello, sweet Tracy and funny and kind Renee. <laughs> I'm funny and kind. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> he is kind. I'm very kind. I, tr I try to be. Yeah. Don't give me a reason not to be. Uh, and hello, everyone else viewing on Saturday's lesson. Good morning, Lou. I had a lovely chat with Beth at DecoArt this morning. We were just touching base. Hadn't talked to her in a while. It was really nice to chat with her. Can you use drywall paste that painters use? Absolutely. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. Just not the stuff that turns pink. Yeah. Because it'll do weird things when acrylic paint <laughs> goes over. Um, you can use almost any texture medium. The, the key to this is just making sure the application is thin. And when I say thin, I mean a millimeter at most. You do not need to have a lot of color on this or a lot of texture on this. <laughs> she doesn't know you, does she? <laughs> that <laughs> that was judy back there. oh yes <laughs> you are funny and kind he is I, funny. I, like i said i try to be kind yep. we all make the effort sometimes it's very difficult sometimes people make it really difficult <laughs> yeah yeah i don't like people yeah sometimes peopling is hard Okay. Oh, what's this? Oh, love it. I love it. Uh, good morning, everybody. Just checking in, but we'll be leaving to stay with my son at the beach. Oh, nice. Awesome. The heat does a number on, on my health. I have a wonderful paint. And we'll catch you on the replay. Right on. Well, you have a wonderful day at the beach. Do it. Never a dull day at the Moreau household. Never. Just saying. <laughs> That's Karen. Yep, that is quite true. Miss Airy went for her shots yesterday. <laughs> she was done. 
for a kitten that we have to pat down to look for the key, I swear to God, that cat is just wound for sound. Um, she came home from the vet yesterday after getting her shots. And she slept, I think, a good four hours straight. And then moved. And then moved over to sit next to Renee on the computer chair. And that's where she stayed for another two and a half hours. <laughs> And she was not moving around much. She, she just and, took and everything out of her yesterday. She went to the litter box, yep. did her thing there, and then immediately went up. Upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah. So she was just done. <laughs> Poor little thing. Yeah, that was a However, rough this morning she is right back to normal. <laughs> she has been a very busy kitty. What's this? I struggled with peopling? Oh, I get, you know... <laughs> It depends entirely on your purpose for peopling. I don't want to go grocery shopping <laughs> if I can avoid it. But you know what? The best You're thing... not allowed. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go grocery shopping anymore. Um, Instacart is my friend. <laughs> yes, I just... Yeah. You are not allowed to be unsupervised mm -mm. amongst people. No, I try very hard to be kind, but I don't suffer fools either. <laughs> Just... Gee, I wonder where I got that from. I, I, um, yeah, I don't like it when people. Well, Gra are... Grampy was the same way too, wasn't he? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it this way: if it didn't come out of his mouth, his fa his face said everything. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I'm the same way. <laughs> Well, fortunately, I know if my mouth doesn't say it, my face will. That's <laughs> pretty much how it goes. So we're going to I still got a little wet spot there. I really piled the paint on. Sorry about that, gang. I had a great group yesterday for Zoom. <laughs> In case deco art discontinues paint is gray, I just ordered six two ounce jars. A good girl. Not sure if that color was going to be in the final cut, but bought some anyway. Right on. Jibba! What? What? Teresa! What did you do now? Terry. Terry Casper. Mm. <laughs> Rounding the amount for you. Puppers and glitter are worth it. $125. Oh my goodness, Terry! That's incredible. You might have to sign the check in her name. <laughs> Between her and Sue Potts, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Terry. We really appreciate it. Had to round it out. Yeah, 3999 30 Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> you rock. You absolutely Some days rock. it sucks being good at math. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my base on here. Now we have a nice even color everywhere. And we're going to make this look like old plaster. So that thin patchy area, the one thing we always forget is that the wood surface is part of that texture. So it's one layer of that texture. And it's going to be the lowest point of that texture. So we're going to start with a little bit of asphaltum. Surprise. I got asphaltum. I love asphaltum. And we're going to start by aging the edges of our surface. Now, I'm going to make me a high-tech applicator. I tear a shop towel into quarters, tuck one quarter into a little ball, and then tuck the little ball into another quarter, and voila, high-tech applicator. <laughs> Super high-tech. Super high-tech. It's not just high tech, it's super high tech. It came from the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> it's knowledge passed down from the aliens. Yeah, knowledge passed down from the. So all I do is I get this wet, a little bit of water. And I pick up a little bit of asphaltum. And this always scares people when I do this. But I'm going to. Keep the darkest value to the outside edge 
and I'm going to go all the way around the edge in a circular fashion, like so. And I change directions frequently as I'm doing this so that it gets that color down into the lowest point of the texture. And it's going to form a bit of a, a ring around the middle, like so. Don't panic. It takes a little bit of practice to get this, but you can get there. So once you've gotten this far, you're gonna take a little bit of water on your applicator, just a little bit of water. And you're going to rub in a circular fashion. It's going to take some of the color off in places and it's going to redeposit it in others. Sue Potts. I'm oh gonna have to add goodness. her name to the check too. <laughs> For the puppers and kitties, come on, let's try and get the fund over 4K today. Uh, you're getting pretty close. Wow. <laughs> Sue Potts, you're awesome. I'd love to see it go over 4K. I would love to, yes. I hope you. For the precious puppers and kitties, $50 from Desiree Vollmer. Vollmer, thank you. You guys. You guys rock. We're going to have to. You're getting close. So I just continue going around the outside edge and I layer it up. See how it gets a little bit darker each time? Now I'm going to take my applicator and I'm going to turn it inside out so the ugly dirty one on the outside goes inside the one in the middle. Super high tech. Super high tech. <laughs> Recycling. Recycling. <laughs> so I'm going to take that and I'm just going to lightly apply a little bit of color to the center. <laughs> Faye Reed slept in. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> she went to a concert last night. Ah. Which one, Faye? She was at the beach this week. I was so jealous. I'm not sure which beach she went to. And we did it. Are we over 4,000? We're over 4,000. Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> and the one that pushed it over the edge was J.L. Brewer. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. You guys are amazing. <laughs> she says 4K on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, I'm getting old. Boxcar Country Fest. Oh, cool. So now that I've got that color on there, I'm going to start taking a little bit of it off. So this is just damp with a little bit of water. And I'm going to gently rub this surface to remove a little of that color from the high point. And first thing you're going to notice is how much that lower texture stands up. So all of those lower areas that you see, the darker areas that you see popping up, that's the wood surface. So now we have this nice stone looking old plaster looking piece with just those three colors and a very thin application of texture super simple so right now it just looks a little brown but i need to warm it up and i forgot i have one other color i gotta use <laughs> yay puppers <laughs> yay for the puppers so i'm gonna use a little little bit just a little bit of raw sienna I like raw sienna. 
and I'm going to take this color out here just to warm this up. Give it a nice little bit of heat. I'm just going to rub the whole surface with a little bit of raw sienna. Just like that. And I mean the whole surface everywhere. I love raw sienna because it's a little on the transparent side and it just gives everything a nice golden look. Look at that. So pretty. I love it. And the fun part about this is that if there's brush marks, if there's cut marks, lines in the surface, it all falls into the texture. So it becomes part of the finish. So you don't have to fuss with it too much. <laughs> Gonna have to raise the bar to 6,000? <sighs> I, I don't know. Whew. Mama's having a hot flash here. I, I have the goal set at 5,000 right now. Yeah. So we shall see. We shall see. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to break out one of my favorite toys. I like this one. My vintage note stamp. I am, uh, as you know, my favorite stamp, uh, the vintage note, is no longer in production. It is <clears throat> no longer being made. And I only have about 12 left. Gasp. On the website. So if you don't have one and are looking for them, it's probably going to be your last chance. And it's same with my grunge set. Oh, no. I'm down to about the last 15 or 16 sets. That's uh -oh. all we have left, and that's all that's av available. Oh, wow. So if you're looking for my grunge set or for my vintage note set, a vintage note stamp, um, I only have a few left. And, and once they're gone, they're gone because I can't get any more. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't matter if we go beyond 5,000 because it's all for the puppers and kitties. Exactly. Exactly. So, I have a stays on stamp pad. Uh, this one is Timber Brown. Decided to go away from black and use a, a, something brown for this just to keep it warm. So, I'm going to use my vintage note stamp for this, and we're going to create a little bit of texture along the outside edges of this. And this is how we're going to do it. We're just going to run the stamp along the edge like so. I don't want it everywhere. I'm just creating a little bit of interest along the edge. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be perfect. And I kind of like that it's irregular. Uh, Faye Reed, Reed is asking, can you bring the postage stamps? I need more. Postage stamps. Cancellation stamps? I have some, yeah. Yeah. Can you bring the postage stamps, Tracy? I'm going to try and get a couple of sheets of just postage cancellation stamps. No, oh, yeah. Smoke. Pardon me. A little warm. I haven't one of those moments. Holy smoke. Can I get a hot flash in February when it's minus 35? No. But when it's plus 35, when you can have 35, one. plus 35, sure. <laughs> no problem. You know, sweating like a hooker in church here. Holy smoke. Mike Tyson at a spelling bee. So I've got a nice little bit of texture. I didn't want to go over overboard with it. If you want to, you can add whatever you want to this. You want to put... Oops-a-daisy. If you want to put... Uh, cancellation stamps in somewhere by all means go right ahead if you want to tuck in a butterfly somewhere or add more lettering to it go for it I just wanted a little bit of texture around the outside edge so I'm going to dry this real quick and then we're going to create sort of a chipped look along the edge of this That's a re weird request. What's that? For 6000 you have to glitter your armpit? Ew. Gross. Ew. <laughs> Ew. 
Nobody needs to see that. I was... Uh, no, it was my idea to begin with. It was. <laughs> I can't say I was reluctant reluctant to agree to glitter... Beer, glitter. But it was my it was idea. idea so. It was my idea, so... <laughs> so I'm using my stamp pad to create a rough edge a broken edge. You could do this with a brush if you wanted to and a dark brown. But I'm just rubbing along the edge and the more of the surface I actually put on this on the edge the more texture I get. So a little bit, a lot, how much you do is entirely up to you. I kind of like the a few little ones and one or two big ones. It just makes the thing look a little more distressed and it's easy to control so look at that <laughs> that is a hilarious expression i've never heard before what's that hooker in church oh i'm sweating, sweating like, like a hooker in church sweating like a hooker in church yeah you need to write a book of tracyism <laughs> i have a few i suppose some of them not appropriate <laughs> some of them are yeah some of them will lose the PG rating pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> ah, we can live life from the PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to dry this real quick, and then we're going to add a float of a to the outside edge. Just to bring it all together. This kind of looks like it looks like old stone, but it also kind of looks like old parchment. I can have a lot of fun with this. So I'm just going to come in here with a little float of asphaltum all the way around the outside. I just like how it ages this, gives it a little more weight. Just like so. Easy peasy. <laughs> Not appropriate. Bring <laughs> it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I have a few sayings. I should write a book about <laughs> Tracy and travel stories. Travel stories. Yeah, I have a few travel stories. Especially one dealing with a bag of what cornstarch? Cornstarch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not suspicious at all. <laughs> yeah, especially when you've got a box knife in your carry-on. <laughs> <laughs> box knife and a bag of cornstarch. And a box a full of cash. <laughs> and a box full of cash. Going through airport security. Yeah. yeah. On international flight. <laughs> No, it wasn't. It was domestic. Was it domestic? Yeah, it was uh, domestic. It would have been funnier if it was international. It would have been funnier if it was been international, but I'd probably still be in jail. So. <laughs> <laughs> and not here. No. It was funny, not funny. <laughs> yeah. So that is your background for this piece. It's not nearly as difficult as it might seem. So a little bit of texture. We've got a base color of either buttermilk or almondine. And then it's essentially just been color washed with a little bit of asphaltum and then a little bit of raw sienna just to keep it nice and warm. And then we used a stamp to create a little <laughs> visual interest at the edges and to create that chipped or worn look at the outside. Mm -hmm. So with all of that done, I'll just make sure it's good and dry because if it's sticky, we're going to have a problem. And we're going to trace and transfer our grapes <laughs> to the surface. The skull story. Oh, that one was funny. Yeah. The quarter inch masking tape was funny too. What would you do with the quarter inch masking tape? That was tape? just three weeks after 9-11. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, I was doing a faux finishing seminar for uh, SPC in Edmonton, Alberta. And it was very difficult at the time to get your hands on quarter inch painter's tape, the little narrow stuff. Yeah. And we were using it for a very specific finish. 
So I said, well, I'll get some from our supplier and I'll take it with me on the plane. Eh. Which I did. It was three, not even three weeks after 9-11. And um, I got stopped at airport security and they wouldn't allow me on the plane with quarter inch masking tape. I had 12 rolls of it. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> they wanted to know why I was traveling with 12 rolls of tape. Never know when you might need to fix something. So I, I explained it to them that I was teaching this faux finishing seminar and it's quarter inch painter's tape, not masking tape, painter's tape. And I said, why is this a problem? And this very large RCMP officer informed me, well, you could tie somebody up with it. I said, I'd need all 12 rolls. <laughs> <laughs> he said well you can't take it on the plane i said well i need it and i can't put it in my carry-on because my carry-on's in the belly of the plane so he said i think i might have a solution they put it in a security pouch a secure pouch like the type they use for transporting weapons <laughs> <laughs> and then escorted me onto the plane with <laughs> So you can imagine what everybody in the plane must have been thinking. Who is this woman? Who is this little woman being escorted with this large weapon bag and the even larger police officer? <laughs> and then I had to wait for airport security to come and get the pouch off the plane before I could get it. I bet you got the best service on that flight. Oh, no. I, nobody no. wanted anything to do with me. <laughs> I was just a pariah on that one. <laughs> Thankfully, it was not a long flight. So I've got my line drawing taped on. Make sure it's reasonably centered. And I'm going to show you a nifty trick for tracing things like grapes or berries. What not. And I just, I like this trick for a couple of reasons. Um, it just makes for nice uniform berries and fruit whenever you're doing that. So I use my 0.38, my red gel, and I use a shape maker for this. And you just find the circle that comes closest to the size of the circle that you're going to trace. And you trace, like so. First of all, it's fast. And second, you don't have any egg-shaped grapes. That's how that works. And it's so much easier to paint a round surface, a round shape, when it's actually round. And then it's consistent. You get nice, round grapes. Oops, a daisy. That one's going to have a line through it. So this is one of the reasons I like working with a shape maker, is that when you're tracing something, so that it's accurate, so that it's clean, it's so much easier to paint these things when they're well traced. And when they're clean and accurate, it gives your finished piece a much cleaner look. Things look much better. They look very professional. Not to mention, we're going to get really nice lush grapes out of this. You don't have to torture yourself. Mm -hmm. Where do you get the shape maker? I have these on uh, this. We have them in sets. So we have square circles um, and a variety of other shapes. And then there's three stencils in a set. They're in the M square section on my website. I'm a big fan of a shape maker. Anything that's going to make my, my job a little faster and a little more effective. I like it. And this is a really easy way to get a really nice tracing done. And I'll show you what I mean. So I used my shape maker and look, I've got nice clean grapes, nice happy grapes. I missed one though. So it does make a big difference when you're tracing a line drawing to have it accurate. It's difficult to, and I say the same thing about lettering, it's difficult to get nice straight lettering when the tracing isn't straight. 
when your lines aren't straight. It's difficult to get it, make it look right. So that's one of the reasons I always recommend using, use some tools. Don't be afraid to use tools. There's no rules that say you can't. So I'm a big fan of tools. So you use your shape makers you use your straight edge ruler for doing all your vertical and horizontal lines on your lettering and that way everything is nice and straight and clean and you have an accurate line drawing it will make your life a whole lot simpler not to mention your artwork's gonna look so good and you'll be so much happier with it So I'm going to move my graphite paper so that I'm actually there. So we're going to trace out these grape leaves. This is going to come together surprisingly quickly because we're, we're not base coating anything. There's no base coats in this. We are working with the existing color, which is that either light buttermilk or the almondine on the surface. So that finished background is your base color for these grapes. And the technique we're going to use is going to create a more spherical look to these grapes. And not only that, it's going to give them almost a transparent feeling. You know how sometimes you see grapes, they almost look as though the skin is translucent, like you can almost see through them. We're going to create that look. And grapes are one of those things when they're painted with great colors, they're just, they're yummy. They look lush. And that's one of the, I like this technique for that. And then we've got this fun little landscape down here that is going to be, again, it's very rudimentary, nothing fancy. It's a little tower and a little couple of little outbuildings. I think this is more like a little church. A little outbuilding, a little bit of a landscaping. Some nice little cypress trees. Little rolling hills. If you've ever been to Tuscany and you see these beautiful trees off in the distance. And then we've got our little vineyard here. So we've got rows of grapes. And I kind of want these to have that sort of bumpy look, that rounded out look. So just a little seesaw back and forth like this. Keep it simple, doesn't have to be elaborate. And don't forget the doors and windows because these are pretty straightforward. And I'm going to check. I oh, can't see it. Uh, didn't quite press hard enough, I think. There we go. And then all we have left to trace is this lettering down here. This is Vino Toscano. Just Tuscan wine. And again, I just wanted something simple, so I went with a very basic lettering. Nothing too fancy, nothing too um, complex. I didn't want it to be complex. We're going to make this look rather worn, so we don't really have to worry too much about the perfection of it all. We want it to kind of look a little distressed. This part is actually quite simple. So this one is going to involve a little bit of line work to do the sketch of this little village. A little bit of floating. And we're only going to be using a couple of colors. Um, a little bit of asphaltum. And maybe a little bit of raw sienna. 
maybe a little bit of warm white. We'll see. But it's going to be simple. So a quick tracing of this lettering. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I did make sure it was at least level before I traced it on there, so. And I've prepped another one because I, uh, I want to do another one. I posted the picture of this the other day and immediately got a letter from a, uh, or an email from a friend saying, mine is okay, fine. <laughs> Oh, I can barely see that, but close is close enough. We'll get it done. So we have nice little line drawing, fairly simple. And I'm going to start with that lettering down at the bottom because I can hardly see it and it's not going to get any better as time goes by. So I'm going to work with a zero rigger, if I can find one, there it is. I've got a zero rigger and we're going to heavily thin some asphaltum. I'm going to bring that in here. So don't be afraid to really thin this paint out. We want it quite thin, inky. And we're going to use that inky paint to just paint in this lettering. Again, we are not looking for perfection. Some of these letters are going to be darker than others and that's okay. Some are going to be a little less distinct, also okay. I kind of like the irregularities in this. This is, I think, what appeals to me about this type of painting, is that heavily distressed look. I don't know, maybe there's a question or two. I'm looking next thing that oh can I explain the difference between a rigger and a liner again absolutely a liner brush let's see I'll give you a, not just a for instance I'll actually show you the difference so uh, this is a liner brush it's white paper here so you can actually see it this is a liner a script liner for lack of a better term it comes to a very sharp point when you press down on it, it opens up a little bit, but it forms a rounded edge like this, much like a round brush. With a rigger, even though if you look at these, they are in the, exactly the same size ferrule. They're both in a round ferrule. But with a rigger, when it's loaded with paint, it forms a chisel edge like a flat, like this. So with a round brush, it's difficult to paint any lettering with straight or square edges, especially top and bottom, because it has a rounded edge. It can be done, but it's not as easy. If you're working on lettering, using a brush with a square edge is going to make your life a whole lot simpler because you can turn it at a 45 degree angle and use it much like you would a nib. You can paint nice straight edges up and down without having to go back in and fill in spaces. So if you're looking for the difference between a rigger and a liner, this is it right there. 
you can see it when you hold them close together. The liner comes to a sharp point and the rigger comes to a square edge. Just like that. And it makes riggers really, really handy for lettering. And I love me a rigger. So I've got Toscano done. Not thrilled with that, but. This is it first, you're doing the lettering first? I am, just because I can. <laughs> so, and this is a simple one. This, because we don't have to worry about getting the paint uniform because we're on an irregular surface and the end result is intended to be a little irregular. We don't really have to worry too much about the... There we go. Almost done with this one. Little distressed. I kind of like it that way. There we go. And this just makes things look interesting. So we have Vino Toscano. If lettering looks a little too light for you, you can always come back in, put another coat on. We're working with thin transparent layers. So don't feel that just because it didn't get as dark as you wanted it the first time that you can't go back and do it again, you can. Easy peasy. Did I miss something? What did you miss? I think Deb Antonix here. Hi, Deb. I think. Hi, hi Puddin. Speaking of Deb, she's been <laughs> really busy. Her renos are getting closer and closer to done. Oh, nice. She's going to have a functional studio very soon. She's so excited. She's been playing with her laser. She's got a new toy coming. She's been busy. <laughs> playing with lasers? She's been playing with lasers. So I'm using a liner for this next bit. And I'm going to use the same thing we used for the lettering, which is that thin dash faltum. And we're just going to outline the little buildings in the background. That little landscape back there. Just going to outline these buildings. Fill in those little windows. Little L's. Why has Deb Bloomfield got double top going on here? I don't know. <laughs> Kathy Pruitt, this is the magic brush we've all heard about. You can side load, float with a flattened number two. Yesterday, I bordered an ornament with gold by placing a number two rigger halfway on the edge. The edge that was hanging over made it easy to keep the line straight and even. Brilliant. So all I'm doing is using that thin dash faltum to paint in that little landscape that's in there. Again, it's rudimentary. Don't worry about getting it perfect. We're just creating a little spot. And then remember the little vineyard down here. I'm just going to pull a few little lines. 
just to establish the the vineyard. Oops. Easy peasy. Don't overthink it. It's just scribbly lines, more scribbly lines. Same with the little landscape back there, those little hills and trees and whatnot. Don't overthink it. Just sketch them out. It's just a loose outline. Easy. That little landscape is just there to create a little interest. That's it. So the details are not overly important as long as it's implied. So I've got that little landscape sketched in just using the liner. I didn't do anything over the top, but I'm going to dry this now really well because we're going to add a couple of little details to this. We're going to develop this landscape just a little. And this was just a sketch I did off of a wine bottle label. Go figure. <laughs> so I'm going to use, um, I'm working with a 3 8 angled shader. This is a water lily. The Dynasty Water Lily. And I'm going to pick up some of that Thin Dash Fulton that we've been working with. And we're going to use that to shade our little houses under the roof line, the back of the roof. We're just going to add a little dimension to these, like so. little shadow right there I like the idea of just floating along that hill a little bit do the same thing here And then I'm going to do the same thing to the trees. Just add a little float to the back side of the tree on the on the right, just to give them a little shading. And then we have a nice little sketch. So we can take a little bit of warm white or even a little bit of the the base color and we can float a little highlight onto the front of the building. It's just a little front of the roof there. Just to brighten it a little so that it stands out a little bit. That's the highlight side. There we go. A little bit on the roof. A little bit in the foreground. And that's all we need to do to that. So I'm going to dry that. We have a nifty little landscape. You could, if you wanted to, add a little color to this if you wanted. Um, but I kind of like the, the contrast and, and having all of the color in this one area. So we're going to go with that. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with these grapes. And the color that I chose to paint these grapes with is quinacridone magenta. This is an in-your-face red. It is a very strong color, so you do not need a lot of it. As you can see, I've got a small... I never work with tiny amounts of paint, but you don't need to have a lot for this. I can promise you. The other colors we're going to work with are... 
uh, green gold. It's this one here, which is that, again, in your face green. And dioxazine purple. And we're also going to work with sap green. If I can find my bottle. There it is. Sap green is this really dark, um, transparent green. If you don't have it, you can use plantation pine. Oops. If you don't have the green gold, you can use uh, sour apple. Any bright high yellow green will work just fine. Sour apple will work. Margarita will work. Any one of those bright greens will work just fine. And for the quinacridone magenta, you can use um, alizarin crimson. You can use, hang on, I'll find it. Uh, cranberry wine will work. Um, and uh, Tuscan red will work. So you just need a really bright in your face red. That's all you need. So we're going to start with the leaves. I'm going to grab myself a nice round brush because we don't need anything really fancy for this. We're going to start with that green gold and we're going to thin it out quite a bit. Make it nice and watery. Lots and lots and lots of water or lots and lots and lots of Josonia's Fast Dry. And we're going to begin adding color to these leaves. So again, you don't have to overthink this. You're just putting a wash of this green all over the leaves. It's a wash. Just one coat is all you really need. It's not fancy, fast and dirty. That's what I call it. And that leaf is tucked in behind those grapes. So don't forget, tuck a little of that green in there. A little bit. And then we're going to do this leaf up here. Yep, Aries feeling fine. <laughs> you guys can't hear it, but we can. She is running back and forth upstairs. Probably terrorizing Gizmo. Just had to block somebody. Oh? Yeah. They were sending links to a very nefarious website. Oh, okay. Goombye. Nefarious, good word. So this is just a wash, loose wash. You can tell it's not opaque. It's very transparent. Whatever you do, don't click anything that says tiny URL in the main, yep. main link. Nope. Do not. You're trying to get your IP address or username or password or... What have you? No tiny URLs. So, there we are. This green gold is so vibrant. It's lovely. Ooh, Valerie Clemens is wondering what brush you're using. This one is a number six round, it's a water lily, but any round will do. <laughs> <laughs> Kitten's going a mile a minute. Yeah, nothing kept her down for too long. So, we have leaves. Oh, put my finger in wet paint. Go figure. Oh, 
Was the wine bottle full or empty? Um, well, it both. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It full. was full at one time, <laughs> and now it's not. Uh, did you thin your green? My green, my green. Yes. <laughs> your green with fast dry glaze, or did you just use water? I, you can use either or. I use glaze, but I use glaze for everything. So, but uh, yes, you can use either or. And I heavily thin it. The wonderful thing about these fluid acrylics is that they are very highly pigmented. So you get lots of bang for your buck. So oodles and oodles and oodles of great rich color. I love the fact that these have such wonderful pigmentation. You can do so much with it. So look at that. Now... One of the reasons that I love working with these is that all of that stuff that we did beforehand shows through. And that just makes everything come together, which really appeals to me. So I'm going to rinse my brush out thoroughly. And then I'm going to dry this. And we're going to add a shadow to these leaves. I love this color. It's just yummy. And I'm going to get a bigger angled shader. I want a half inch. Nice half inch. Also a water lily. <laughs> what are you chuckling about? <laughs> uh, I have officially reached the age where my brain goes... From, you probably shouldn't say that, to, what the hell, let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> yep. I've been there for a long time. Yeah. It's hereditary, son. So, we're going to start adding a little bit of shading to our leaves. I'm using a little bit of sap green. I love sap green. I love sap green like I love plantation pine. I like that rich, dark green. And we're going to start by putting a nice little shadow on the leaf around these grapes. Just tuck it in. <laughs> Same. Yep. Getting a lot of theme. Yep. It's like, what's the worst that can happen, right? <laughs> So I'm just giving these a little float down that center vein and on those little veins coming off of that center line. Just a little float. Remember, you don't have to get it all done in one go. You can actually go back and do it again if it needs to be a little darker. So it doesn't have to be perfect the first time out. Sap green, also a media color. It is. Right there. It almost looks black in the bottle, but it's a very dark green and a very earthy green. So it's really great for shading things like an antique green. Um, any one of your greens with a little bit of brown in them, those earthier tones, it, it's fabulous. But it's also really great for shading this. And I really love that it's such an easy color to control. So look at that. So we've got pretty shadows. Oh boy, did I mess that up. Hello. Hello. There. I put that shadow in the wrong spot. So we've got leaves. And I'm going to come down to this one and do the same thing. Nice shadow down the center vein. And then don't forget, nice little shadow in and around those grapes. 
And again, you don't have to get it all done in one go. You can come back in and adjust. Such a pretty green. Such a pretty green. Now we're working with a pretty minimal palette for this. You really don't need to have a ton of colors. One of the best things about working with fluid acrylics is that they are all intermixable. So if you need a color and you don't have a color, you can easily make one. Easy peasy. Not to mention they're fun. There we go. So we have shading in place. Now I can come back in and I can darken any of these that I choose to if I feel they need it which I'm going to do particularly in here. There's a little bit of green in there and it needs a little shadow. And then I'm going to take a little bit of asphaltum. No, I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm using my dirty brush. And I'm going to deepen that shadow on this side where all of these grapes overlap this leaf. I'm just going to put a little float of asphaltum over everything. It's just going to deepen all of those shadows quite nicely. It's going to make that leaf look a lot darker, but without burying everything. So we, we still have everything showing through, but we've got a, a nice deep shadow back there. And we need it because there's no light getting to that leaf, except perhaps that outer edge. It's being hidden by that cluster of lush grapes. So now that we've got those leaves, got those base colors in, got that in, we've got to start working on these grapes. So I'm going to be using a 3 8 angled shader and we're going to start with some quinacridone magenta. Now when I say that this is an in-your-face red, it's an in-your-face red. I am using very small amount of color on this brush, but look, it's very bright. <laughs> and we're going to start on the far left by putting a float of that quinacridone magenta on the left edge of every grape, just like that. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Oop, I found the maximum. You're, you maxed out. Here we go. Give me a second. I got digital zoom still. Oh. Ah. Uh, eh, there. <laughs> there. So, again, this is fast and dirty. We're just getting color in place. That's all we're doing. Nice transparent grapes. Now remember what I said about nice round grapes? It's easier to paint them round surfaces when you start with a round surface. This is where it's going to pay off when you're putting this float in, being able to get it nicely controlled so that you have nice sharp edges. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I think if I get a mal, I have to get one of those slap mills. A what? A slat mill? Slap mill. Okay. Oh, one of the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the treadmill for dogs. That yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think I'd have to get one. Yeah. They make it look like it's fun, but I just the idea of running on a treadmill doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> I think it's because I need to have a purpose. <laughs> you know? Give me a reason. 
I, I, I need to have a purpose and, and a destination. I'm not going to work that hard to get nowhere. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I have a treadmill. I walk on it every once in a while, but I prefer to be outside to walk. So all of that shading is going on the left side of each grape. That means that you are separating and defining each grape. And you might have noticed we're not really worrying about whether or not they're perfect because at this point it just doesn't matter. <laughs> the treadmill to nowhere. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'm getting nowhere fast. That's why you got to mix treadmill and VR. Oh, really? I yeah. still feel like I'm getting nowhere fast. No, you're not going anywhere. I, it, precisely. But it would seem like you're going somewhere. Isn't that what a Peloton is for? Sure. Okay. <laughs> One that's connected to your TV. <laughs> You know, I've gotten to that age where I don't want to do anything unless it's going to serve a purpose. You know, if I have to go to the grocery store, then I'm also going to go to the bank and to the hairdresser and whatever, because I just, I don't want to have to do one thing and, and lose four hours of my day to do it. So <laughs> I'm funny that way. <laughs> So you can, look at that. See how quick, how lush? And that's just one, one little float in there. So we've got a couple of grapes that are tucked in behind everything. These ones here. So you can put a little extra color on them. You don't really have to worry about a highlight because they're kind of out of the light. So now you can come in and you can deepen these colors a little bit. So a second float. Just to deepen things a little. There's one here. I forgot to do something. So I'm going to put a little float in here. These grapes on the far left here are kind of out of the way. So there's not a lot of light getting to them. So they get treated a little bit differently than the ones that are a little more open to the light. So we get a little color on those. Now we've got nice dark grapes on the left and all the bright lighter grapes are on the right. So one little coat. Neatness doesn't count. There's nothing perfect about this. But we've established which ones are catching light and which aren't. So we're going to dry this real quick. And then I'm going to freak you out with a new color. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica. Okay, being honest here. I tried just to sit and watch. Nope. I remembered I have garlic chives to chop and dry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, garlic chives? Oh. Yum. Yum. Hmm. Yum, yum, yum. I harvested cilantro and parsley last week and dried, what, two pounds of each? And two that's pounds? Two pounds. Jeez. Yeah. That's a lot of parsley. <laughs> so I've, I have garden fresh parsley all dried and ready for the winter, and I have uh, cilantro. I have to go out and harvest uh, thyme and oregano because both of those plants have lost their minds and I have a feeling this week we're going to have a crap ton of tomatoes so these grapes are going to use that green gold and this is going to round out our grapes so we're going to float the right side of each grape with that green gold. I know it's a kind of freaky color to put on a grape, but you see, you'll see what I mean. And all of them get it, including those darker ones on the back. Hmm. 
because it changes how these grapes look. So green gold. It's just a wash, it's heavily thinned. I'm going to float it on the right side, like so. So what are they? Green grapes? They're grapes grapes. They're just grapes. <laughs> are they pre-red wine or pre-white wine? Red. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> wine seeds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like grapes. I don't take. I don't take my wine in solid form. <laughs> I like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy grape juice. Spicy grape juice. Yeah. <laughs> <there's>, yeah. <laughs> what was it? Uh, Sean called uh, plastic explosives spicy Play-Doh. Spicy Play-Doh. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. It's spicy Play-Doh. Yep. Can't dispute it. So uh, there's our little bit of green gold right over top of that magenta. And it went over top of the magenta. So could you use fluid, fluid acrylic wash on top of water-based oil paintings because of the transparency? Question mark. Hmm. I honestly, I can't honestly answer that question because I've never worked with water-based oils to any degree. And I've never tried acrylics over top of water-based oil. I honestly, I couldn't say. That doesn't make sense. From a logical standpoint, knowing how oils work. It, but it, calling it a water-based oil. Yeah, there are water-based oils. That does not make sense to me. <laughs> no, but there are some. <laughs> They're a water-soluble oil. Not a water base, water soluble. Ah, okay, that, that makes, makes more sense. sense. Yeah. Um, and they are beautiful. They work just like an oil based paint. They're they're lovely to work with. I've had a little experience with them, but not enough to be able to answer that question honestly. And I don't want to give you a bad answer. So there we YouTube go. YouTube would not let me in. Shouldn't matter. You should be yeah. able to watch it whether you're logged in or not. It's yeah. a public video. So. It's weird. I love the effect of that green gold with that quinacridone magenta. It just makes for a really nice base for these grapes. So the next color we're going to add to this is Diox purple. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why isn't that one? So I'm going to dry this real quick. Now the okay. that don't work. What's that? Another stream deck just didn't work. Okay. It it decided to run home to mama. Yeah. So we're going to work with a little bit of I'm switching to a slightly larger brush for this because I want this to expand a little further. So a little bit of dioxazine purple. It's a scary color because it is a very strong color, especially in the media fluid acrylic. So this is Diox purple and we're working with just a little bit of it because it's an in-your-face purple. Oh, blue. It's almost, yeah, it's a really strong purple. So a little bit of Diox. I'm loading the brush as if to float. So I need to get a nice gradient. And then we're going to start shading these grapes but we're going to come in from the edge just a little like a millimeter in from the edge like so so you're going to have just a thin line of that quinacridone magenta showing Just like that. And make sure that your brush, the whole chisel edge of the brush is on the surface because you're going to need the purple to affect both the magenta and the green gold that you put on there.
and it's going to come all the way around like that. So just a thin line of your base quinacrinone magenta. Shade that little one. Remember these ones that are tucked back under here? You're going to put a shade of that diox over top of those two. that thin float it's heavily thinned it's not a solid color is going to create some really nice depth on this now we've got a little grape back here that is full away from everything so we're going to pull a nice dark float over that little grape. There we go. So it always amazes me what that little float of that diox purple does to both that quinacridone magenta and to that green gold. Kind of gives that green gold a little bit of a almost a brown feel, a really earthy vibe. And because we're leaving that little space, transparency, that the light kind of passes through the skin on that grape. We get this one last little grape down here at the bottom. I'm going to make sure I get a nice float in there. I want to make sure I separate all of these grapes nicely. I've got one here I keep missing. There we go. There. So we've got a nice highlight in place. We've got a nice little bit of shading in place. We've rounded out these grapes really nice. And now we're going to add a highlight to the opposite side. So we've got all of this dark on this side. Now we want to brighten up the other side. So we're going to do that with a little bit of warm white. If you don't have warm white, you can use uh, titanium white. It will work just fine. You can also use light buttermilk. You just need to change the value a little bit. Now, 
I'm thinning out this white a little. You want it, don't want it fully opaque, but you do want it a little opaque. So we're going to come in from the edge again, just like we did with the, the purple. We're going to come in from the edge slightly with the warm white. And we're going to put a highlight on our grape, just like this. In from the edge, just a scooch. Like so. Now I've thinned my warm white fairly heavily because I don't want this to have this harsh white highlight everywhere. It needs to be fairly subtle. There we go. Almost there. So that little bit of warm white kind of mutes and softens some of the other grapes, some of the other colors that you see in there. Without, It's not a garish highlight. And then all we need from this point is a simple dot highlight on a few select grapes. We don't need a ton of it. So I'm going to be selective about where I place these. And I want them on the higher grapes. So dot there. This one's getting nice highlight. This one and this one and this one are getting a nice highlight. These are all towards the foreground. So I'm focusing more to the right for those brighter highlights because these ones are exposed to the more of the direct light. And there we go. So it makes for a nice lush, shiny looking grape. And we have a stem in here. Now I like my stems to be not solid brown because they're very rarely solid brown. So I'm using a little bit of asphaltum and I'm mixing in a little bit of green gold. It's going to make sort of a muddy brown green color. And that's what I'm going to use to paste my stems. Maybe a little more brown. It's a little, little too green yet. There we go. I like this technique. It's simplified but it's very effective. It produces some nice round grapes, some very lush looking grapes. So here is our stem for our grapes. No questions. Why is Facebook ahead of YouTube? That's unique. No, not really. No? No. Uh, <laughs> YouTube is always behind Facebook. I don't know why. It's a very technology-based question. Yeah. 
Facebook is ahead because um, Facebook has a higher or lower latency, yep. but the video quality on Facebook is capped, so you can't go any higher than a certain resolution. Gotcha. So that's why it comes out sooner. Whereas YouTube, whatever we tell it to broadcast at... Is what it broadcasts at. Will broadcast at, which increases the latency. No sound. I have no sound. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I love the grapes. Now all I did for those stems, I just took a little bit of that um, asphalt and mixed it with a little bit of green gold so that I got a gr dark greenish brown. And I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to shade it a little bit with a little bit of that. Where did my brush go? There it is with a little bit of that um, sap green. So I'm just going to put a dark shadow down the back side of this stem, like so, just so that it's a little darker. There we go. And while I have that out, I'm going to deepen some of these shadows on the leaves. Because now we get to adjust things. So I'm going to deepen a few shadows. Deepen a few details in these leaves. And we're going to um, highlight our leaves here shortly. Because they need a little punching up. Here we go. And I'm just going to use a little bit of warm white and a little bit of that green gold for the highlight. So just essentially I'm using a small amount of green gold loaded into my brush and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white just to make that green gold a little more opaque. And then we're going to use that as our highlight color. So it's not a really strong highlight. So I can highlight down my center vein. I can highlight some of those little veins in the leaves. Doesn't have to be a strong highlight. Just that little extra opacity changes how this looks. So there we go. I like that little touch of warm white to that green gold. It just gives it a nice smoky, um, almost a chalky appearance. But it does give us a nice highlight, shapes the leaf nicely without creating a ton of color changes. And then I want to add a little bit of that quinacridone magenta to the leaves. I like a little touch of red in the leaves. So just a little, and you can be very selective about where it goes, but just a little on that green, it just makes the leaves pop a little. And it pulls some of the color from the grapes out onto the leaves, just makes things a bit more interesting. Like that. God forbid anything should be boring. And then we've got a few little little leaves and vines that we need to deal with. So get these little leaves out here. I'm going to shade them with just a little U-shaped float. 
at the base where the leaf joins that stem. And I'm going to treat it the same as I did the other leaves when it comes to the highlight. I'm going to use that green gold with a little bit of warm white added to it just to make it a little more opaque. And I'm going to give it a little highlight out at the tip. Nothing major. Just a little one. I'm going to bump up a couple of highlights here. Because I can. I'm the boss of me. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> so I like that little bit of red in the leaves. It just lends a little more realism to things. So I'm going to give this a quick dry and then I'm going to put in some vines and tendrils and then erase some graphite lines. And then we'll deepen a few shadows and I think we're just about done. Okay. Okay. So I need <laughs> Deb. <laughs> she does do what she wants. That's <laughs> the way I carry the bail money. <laughs> That's right. She knows me and loves me anyway. I have a strange feeling you'd be right next to her. <laughs> yep. She frequently is. So strange feeling she'd be right next to you in the jail cell. Yeah. Who's paying your bail money then, Deb? <laughs> if you two are in the same jail cell. <laughs> Sandy. We have friends, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy won't be in jail with us. She'll be busy shaking her great thing. She will be busy at the courthouse bailing us out. <laughs> and be upset that she missed it. <laughs> Your sound is not working. I beg to differ. Oh, sound seems to be working fine. Let me go to YouTube on the phone. Okay. So, once I get to this point, all I really want to do at this point is adjust things. That's all. Oops. So I'm just going to adjust a couple of highlights like so because I can and I like brighter highlights to have wonderful highlights in those grapes and I don't want to mess with them so I need to balance so I need to bring bring it into these leaves a little bit like so look at that how pretty okay so I've got some highlights adjusted. I'm going to deepen a few shadows. And from here, I just use a shvaltum. This is my opportunity to deepen a whole bunch of things. So a little bit of a shvaltum. I just, especially on this leaf back here, I want to get this nice rich shadow back here. I can do the same thing to these grapes. I can put a nice little float of a shvaltum over some of these grapes, like so. You really bring out some color. It just, these shadows, deepening these shadows just makes all of the others pop a little. So I'm just deepening that, I deepen that. And I think I'm happy. All right. I think I'm happy. Not that I'm ever unhappy, but... He's pretty. So, I'm going to dry this real quick, and then I'm going to clean up some graphite lines because they're driving me crazy. And that, believe me, is a short trip. What? Going crazy? Crazy, yeah. yeah. I could probably walk from here. <laughs> 
So this is nicely dry. I'm going to take my favorite eraser and I'm going to clean up my graphite lines because I don't like graphite lines. I'm going to clean those up. And this is the fun part for me. When you clean up all these graphite lines, it opens up a few little gaps between the grapes, which just makes them look a bit more lush. So you can make any adjustments or corrections as you, as you go. So if there's things that, like right here, I'm not thrilled with this little, little line right there. So I'm going to deepen that. I'm going to come as close as I can to that grape. Should have done that with a schwaltum. Just to deepen it so that I have nice deep colors back there. And then I'm going to take my asphaltum and I'm going to deepen that shadow one last time because I can. I'm the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> you do you, boo-boo. <laughs> there we go. Now, I'm going to break out my little gel pen. Squiggly lines. Squiggly lines. I like my squiggly lines. And I'm going to dry this real quick. This is just a fast and easy way to paint grapes. And you can deepen them as much or as little as you want. I got a few little spots I want to look at. Look at that. How easy is that? So, I've got my little gel pen. I'm going to. A nice little squiggly line around my edges of my leaves just to outline them a little. They can be perfect or not. I prefer that they're not, but that's just me. My neighbor just texted me. She just experienced her first visit to Hobby Lobby. <gasps> and now understand my tendencies to go there so often. Uh-huh. You've brought another one into the fold, you little enabler, you. <laughs> People wonder why we have a drug problem. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. So, there we have... No, uh, you can't do dibs. No. No dibs. So there we have. Now, you can spatter this if you want to. A little bit of a schwaltum, just to give it a little extra age. That's always fun. I like spatter. You're going to spatter it? I'm going to spatter. Okay. Because I'm the boss of me. <laughs> oh, little spatter goes a long way to lending itself to this aged appearance. I like it a lot. What do you got, asphaltum on there? Of course. Is water wet? Re wrecking my manicure again, but that's okay. And there you have it. Vino Toscano. Super easy way to paint grapes. Ba -doo. Fun way to paint them using that Decorts fluid acrylics. I really like these fluid acrylics. I love the tones, love the color. Rich, elegant, lots of fun. It's a great one to paint. <coughs> nope, that's the wrong one. <laughs> it's the wrong wheel. You got uh, the wrong wheel? The wrong wheel. There's a wrong wheel? Yeah, we have two of them. <laughs> we have two wheels. Oh, right, we have the membership wheel and we have the... There we go. Got the one with 190 people on it. Wow. Do, 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 do. George. So next Saturday, we're painting a kitty cat. 
So I'll have that uh, finished and up on the website uh, by Monday. I have a lot to do this weekend. <laughs> I'm teaching with the Coastal Decorative Painters tomorrow. We're Zooming. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're painting yeah, poppies tomorrow. I'm excited about that. We're going to spend a little quality time with uh, Edward Hensley and his group, which is fun. Ta-da. <laughs> what is that an ad for? That's a lot. Show them who we are. Marvel Studios Black. Panther Wakanda Forever is now streaming on Disney Plus. Oh, fabulous. I couldn't live till I saw that. Yeah, no. I'm not big on superhero movies. Okay, I gotta get a bit of uh, chicken oats. Uh. <laughs> so, 190 names on that wheel. Yay! The giveaways this week are Dynasty IPC brushes. You're going to love those. We've got some fun things for you. And uh, some nifty blenders in there. Uh, we've also got uh, some stencils and some goodies from Tombow. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of goodie stuff in there. there you, why are you sniffing the Sharpie? To. There's no xylene in those. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't so even smell good. They're not even the fun ones. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like grape. <laughs> smells like brain damage. Yay. Goofball. I know there's no xylene in Yeah, they haven't had xylene in... in <laughs> since the 80s. Since, well, yeah, since the 80s. Early 90s, actually. Yep. Whoa, Marion Dintish McStruckness. Okay. Marion Dish McStruckness. Tish McStruck. Nice, Marion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tackle that because I will wreck it. Um, head over to my website at tracymoreau.net. Click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner of the screen and send us a message with your shipping information so that we can get your goodies out to you first thing on Monday. That's what? <laughs> Go for number two. Go for number two. So I'm looking forward to next Saturday. We're going to paint the kitty. It's been a long time coming and I sketched out uh, Mr. Gizmo for our kitty. So he's a tabby. Suzanne Moore. Awesome. Susan Moore. So anytime that your name is called for one of the giveaways, don't forget to uh, send us a message with your shipping information, please. Um, because if we don't have it and we can't get it to you or if we can't locate you on the server, which takes up quite a bit of time, um, then if it isn't, if we don't get that information within two weeks, it goes back in the bin. So somebody else will win it. <laughs> well, Marion, you just did win something. Congratulations. And Denise Van Newkirk. Awesome. Miss Niece. My girl. <laughs> oh, I'm chilled. I've been complaining about the heat for weeks and now I'm chilled. No, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't, don't know how the hell that happened. <laughs> so um, if you're wondering how you get in on the giveaways, doesn't matter if you're on watching us on YouTube or watching us on Facebook. The uh, software that we're using collects you. So all you have to do is interact with us. Hit the subscribe button on my YouTube channel. Join us every Saturday while we do these lives. Or uh, just simply join the chat. Say hi. Let us know that you're out there. Ask a question. If you're on Facebook, hit the like button, hit the follow button, or just join in the fun. That's all we really ask. And then your name goes on the wheel. And every Saturday, we usually have at least three giveaways uh, with some great goodies in it from our various sponsors uh, like uh, Dynasty Brush Decorart, uh, Southern Ridge Trading. Uh, we have stamps from Stampendous. We have goodies from a variety of companies, including Tombow USA. I'm a big Tombow fan, so 
we use a lot of Tombow products in our designing in the studio here. And uh, so next weekend, uh, we will have the kitty cat kits up tomorrow. They will be up on the website. They just came in. We haven't had a chance to get them put up yet. Give me a second. Gotta... So the cat kits will be available this mm -hmm. week. Oh, my hair is getting in my face now. Here you go. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting to get rid of the wheel. Yeah. And my hair is everywhere today. Yep. Here. <laughs> We have a membership okay. group also. The which? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your membership group pattern will be up this week, too. Yeah. Mm hmm And, oh, if you are part of the paid membership group, don't forget. You have until the end of business tomorrow to get your, uh, your challenge pieces posted in the Facebook group or posted in the community tab on the YouTube channel uh, to get in on the goodies because all the names are going on to the wheel uh, tomorrow night and we will be drawing them still have not got elizabeth yes i know dear they have been shipped but the mail has been terribly slow what was that cindy oh wow cindy just got hers today yeah wow. i it's been one lady got an order she placed on the 16th she got it this week on so, the 16th? And she placed it on the 16th, and it shipped on the 16th. So she got it today, but yet the order she placed uh, like a week before that, two weeks before that, she still hasn't gotten, and yet they all shipped. So mm -hmm. it's there's a backlog somewhere. And Are you writing in cursive on the, the package? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that that's not the case. Uh, that's what postal codes are for. Yeah. Got to run over to Sandy. Thanks for great <laughs> Cindy. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're funny. Shannon, I hope you're well, dear. I'm just looking. Oops. <laughs> yeah, there's somewhere along the line, there's a backlog because there's a bunch of uh, giveaways from the membership group that ha they haven't received yet and they all shipped around the same time so somewhere along oh. the line there's a backlog so and they never sort through the backlog first they always take the newest stuff so it takes a while generally anywhere from 7 to 21 business days you can pretty much guarantee it if there's a holiday in there or a weekend you're hooped <laughs> so all right guys that's it for us today thanks so much for joining us as you do every week we appreciate you so much and uh i hope that you enjoyed this and that you got something out of it i had a lot of fun uh, just creating it so join us next saturday right here 12 noon eastern standard time we're going to be painting another cattle tag this time with a kitty cat little tabby cat on it uh <laughs> we've had so many requests for a cat so the kits will be up uh, probably later this afternoon or tomorrow at the very latest. The kits will be up. The pattern will be up on Monday. We're doing gizmo. We're doing gizmo. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, everybody have a great weekend. Mwah. We love you. Stay safe. Pet your dog. <laughs> that pause is getting longer and longer. I know. Time. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta pet your dog. Gotta